Hello everyone, this is Jenkins Platform SIG. We're on the 26th of September 2023. And tonight we have Hervé Lemeur, Damien Duportal, and myself. Um, we have always the same open action item regarding Docker images, and we'll talk about the ongoing work. And then Java, oh, Mark is not there, and I think we addressed this subject um, two weeks from now. I don't know, maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, then we'll talk about what has been done on the controller and agent images. And then you st we still have some time, we'll address uh, a new topic about Helm charts and cube operators. So first thing first, um, container image deprecation for Blue Ocean container. It is deprecated, but we haven't done yet the whole work um, about announcing that to the community. So most of people know, but some people don't know yet. We have to do something about that in a way or another. Maybe thanks to the um, uh, Jenkins, how is it called, by the way? Jenkins Improvement something? Uh, JEP? No, so it's not improvement, it's Jenkins Enhancement. Proposal, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And um, there's already something that alerts you when you are using an operating system that will reach end of life or is already end of life. It maybe when using that kind of container, you could do something like that, or maybe that has nothing to do with that. Anyhow, we'll have to address that one of these days. Uh, now, for the JDK21, we've been running on Jenkins Infra, a GDK21 early access version for a few weeks now, maybe even a month, I just can't remember. And we also have some GDK21 preview images for, I think, the three agents and for the controller, even for several platforms, like I think we have that for S390X, ARM64, not all the platforms for all the images but you know nobody's asking for it we're already ahead of the time anyhow it's still early access the definitive version is not yet there on terran um, web site today we saw a new banner which was saying uh, with a red background uh, we are rating access to the new java 21 specification test before formally releasing Tamarin 21 so they're waiting for a TCK, if I'm not mistaken, file sent by Oracle, which is funny because um, I was talking to um, um, Eclipse um, committer earlier and some other vendors already got uh, this TCK file and were able to validate their builds. But well, it will come when it will come. And what's funny also is that in their banner, they are giving three links to get access to their early access builds. And frankly, none of them are the one we are using. We are relying on the GitHub repo from Timurin 21 binaries. And we're not using their API, for example. We're not using either uh, their nightly builds website, but um, you know, we have the same binaries, and nonetheless, the releases published on GitHub are the same binaries we could find on those websites. So anyway, just that's to, funny because, yeah, just go ahead. Note, uh, we are using the same binaries. In fact, their API is just a, a way to automatically generate the link that send you to the Timurin 21 binaries. Uh, the problem with that is that, you know, friends don't let friends use latest. Um, you don't know what you're getting, I'm afraid. Uh, you know, you're always using the same link, which links you to the latest build, but you don't know if you have a plus uh, 32, 33, 35. Yes, you so, don't that's, know. so that's the same binary. It's just the front end they provide, so you don't have to do the work that Stefan and you did, uh, searching yes, and generating the naming. Yep. You're right. That there's because we chose to use date CLI, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to grab the latest versions. And that, that wouldn't have worked with that kind of links. We had to use directly GitHub repo. You're right. But yeah, that's the same. The, binary they use the GitHub repo on the back end. Uh, yeah. the, the link the from the API thing. or here when you click is an HTTP redirect to the GitHub repo in the end. You could, yep. If you run a curl uh, dash dash location, you will see the, the chaining of URL that ends on the GitHub repo. But as you said, it's always latest. Got it. And 
it looks like it hasn't changed since August the 11th. And that's okay. We haven't seen any newer beta since then. And that's fine. I'm waiting for the official one. And I've seen that some of the builds, because they have a Jenkins to generate all that, some of the builds are failing for some architectures and some builds are working. And these binaries are updated, you know, for the platform that used to fail and then they succeed, then they update the very same release. Um, so if you can't find your working uh, build for the time being, be patient. It may happen one of these days. Anyhow, uh, Hervé, you gave us a um, website to follow, a uh, website, it's GitHub, of course, uh, in an issue to follow what's going on. It's much more precise than just me saying gibberish. So it's a list of things to do before publishing the official, is it the right term? Official Temerin uh, release for JDK 21 or final or something. Okay, so it's difficult to see. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, it was much too small. So lots, most of the checkbox are checked. There are still the TCK job results. So it's a file sent by uh, Oracle. They run a series of tests and then we have the result pass or fail. And then, okay, why not? But no date available for the time being. We'll see. Um, what did I have in mind? I had something. Um, okay, forgot. Sorry about that. Yep, whatever. Uh, would you have, Hervé, and you anything to say about that? Nothing particular. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Just um, thank you and uh, uh, reading some issue. Looking at the one uh, who are closed, uh, which are closed uh, almost every day, with people uh, asking, "Where is my GTK twenty one image?" Yes, now I remember. Uh, there are four levels of support, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the P1 is the first platform they are aiming for. I think we have X64, um, ARM64. Then they have P2, which may be ARM32, Alpine Linux. No, I think Alpine Linux is even P3. It's even under. And yes, P3 for S390X and so on. So they want to deliver the first images for the P1, then if they have time, P2, then P3, and then there are the unsupported ones. We had doubts a few weeks from now about the Alpine ARM64, and it looks like the image is not always building correctly for Alpine. So maybe it won't even be P1, P2, or P3. It will maybe be unsupported. So we didn't promise anything to our end users. So maybe it will have to disappear one of these days. We'll see. <clears throat> now, uh, for 11, 17, 21, I don't think there is anything new in Mark's uh, document, but I could be wrong. I think, yes, we are sticking to the 2 plus 2 plus 2. And the last time we were discussing that, Mark wanted to get some better diagrams uh, for people to understand. But yes, that's something. Um, I wouldn't say revolutionary, but something pretty new for the whole Java ecosystem. And of course, for Jenkins also, we were still using GDK 8. What is it? Last year, a few months ago, it was not that long away. And we're already using GDK 21. And we'll see. The new pace will be quite faster than what we were used to. The, the main goal here is also to provide deterministic uh, change management you know when you will have to prepare yourself to test the new version. And it's a trade-off between, uh, we have to follow the GDK update because it's an upstream project. Uh, I mean, next year, uh, October, GDK 11 won't receive any more security updates. Yeah. Jenkins project must drop support of GDK 11 at that date last minute. 
it's mandatory. We cannot provide Jenkins safely to our users if we rely on GDK without security of data or support at all. So we need to follow the path from the upstream project, but also we need to find a trade-off to give enough time to our consumer, people who develop plugins, who develop forks of Jenkins, or just builds or users that need to take some time before upgrading in production. We need to let them enough time. So it's a constant trade-off. Uh, everyone wants to go either faster or, uh, uh, or in a stable way. The proposal here is that we will have the same rate as, for instance, Ubuntu with their five-year LTS uh, line. You know when you have to update. That's the near goal uh, with contenting all users. Yeah, you're right. Deterministic. That's much better for the end users. They can have a roadmap and know when they will have to move, not just in panic saying, oh, I didn't see the banner. Uh, oh, too late. I will have to move to a newer version of JDK and I'm not ready to do so. Yeah, you're right. Definitely much, much better. Anything else about this subject? One, two, three. No. OK. Um, then a list à la prévère, <laughs> the work that has been done uh, since two weeks ago on the agent and control images. So we have seen a few version bump on the SSH agent and the creation of GDK21 preview images. So we had three new releases, the latest one being the 5.15.0, I think it was from yesterday. And we have PPC64LE, S390X, ARM v7 for GDK21. Two, because of course we have ARM64 and X64, of course, AMD64. And it doesn't change anything for the end user, but we are now tracking the JDK21 version just in case it would be updated. Uh, then we moved the um, Node Alpine Docker image, but it's just for the test, we just don't care. And the Debian Bookworm Linux version to a newer version. Uh, the most significant change was moving from Bullseye to Bookworm a few months ago. It was months, no. not weeks. No, no. no, weeks, weeks. <laughs> weeks, okay. One month ago for SSH image, which was breaking change. It's yes. quite recent and it's breaking. It is. Uh, we had a few users complaining about uh, it's not behaving the same way. And as we had a few users say that, I was um you know complacent in listening to some other users saying oh i use bookworm and my jenkins plugin uh, does not work anymore for example i had the example for ldap and frankly i was eager to uh believe uh the end users think it's a fault of uh, the move to bookworm but no we have <sighs> what is it, thousands of users of the LDAP plugin, for example. And of course, the um, statistics show that uh, lots of them have moved to Bookworm and it's working for them. So it's not linked to Bookworm. Yes, it's a breaking change, but that doesn't mean it's responsible for all the things that don't work anymore for you. Yes, uh, I got a proposal though, is that in the same way uh, Mark is working on the GDK, I believe the SIG platform could try to draft something about uh, when will be the dates? Because the the change is needed, as you said, but it came out of nowhere, and now we have to communicate afterwards. My proposal is that for the the next major uh, operating system for the Docker images updates, to be proactive and uh, talk about it before the change happen, and we say at that date we will default to this one, because we treated that change as it it was a normal update, which it it's not. Anyway, All right. it, it, it's just a matter of communicating and eventually write a note on the change log. Um, the proposal is at least next time we have a pull request with a breaking change, the pull request body must have the change log written already as part of its body that say, hey, if you are using this, be careful and use the previous version. The good thing in all of this is that the user can still stick to the previous version. We have strict version now. It's possible with the agent, so anyone can stick to a given version. If they use latest and it break, then it means their system has to be improved and not ours. Um, another point, one of the big changes that can or already uh, has beaten some users is that 
uh, the Python installation by default on oh, Debian yeah. Bookworm is now being really, really pushy about using a virtual auth. There are multiple solutions, but that's a good thing because if you install a, um, a pip package on that image, that could break the whole distribution. That's why you must stick to virtual auth or use pipix if you want to have something helping you. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning it is because we have a lot of users that need to install Python and libraries on their agents. Yes, uh, been there, done that. I have um, a set of Docker files um, based on Jenkins that do use Python. And of course, when we moved to Bookworm, I was beaten like the others. I'm not a Python uh, specialist, not at all. And I made a quick Google search and find the answer. Um, but yes, I was surprised. And it wouldn't have been listed in the Bookworm uh, changelog. Right. So even if we had told users, uh, here is the bookworm changelog, be prepared, uh, they wouldn't have been prepared for the Python move. It is what it is, but we can do better. <clears throat> uh, Elvis is telling us that he has finally resolved Docker SSH agent Windows test, by the way, but Tests are still failing on the Windows Server Core. Uh, would you like to tell us um, anything about that, Ellie? No, that was just a note about uh, some little progress. Uh, but yeah, I was happy because uh, my tests were finally working, and then I realized I commented out. <laughs> <Server Core. Okay. laughs> Damn it! And so yeah. Almost there. Uh, Almost. You're progressing. And, That's cool. and the, the thing is, uh, when this test will be will pass, I will be able to. I'll push. I'll put my refactor uh, pull request uh, oh. in ready for review, and then we will have all uh, these Docker agent builds uh, quite similar, and uh, it will be far more easier to to regroup them in one repo instead of that's cool repo. yeah thank you because uh i think either of you don't like the way that we have to uh, republish a docker agent because the original one has been um uh, published a new version has been published and so on so having a mono repo for the three of them would help definitely so thanks a lot for these whole big work of refactoring. That's something that is much, much needed. Thank you. Uh, then for the Docker agent, we also had a few version bumps and a breaking change. And we had four releases. So we have bumped Arc Linux. Um, we have a manifest for GitLFS on Windows, and then we bumped it to 3.4.0 and fixed in installation, it's you, Ellie, of course. And for JDK21, we have added a few platforms that were not there before. And of course, a breaking change, we have moved to Bookworm. Um, that's funny because it's way later than for the Docker SSH agent. Okay, it is what it is. Uh, did you hear any end users complaining about that move? Not yet? Nope. Not yet. Okay, so it may work. <laughs> uh, same for Inbound Agent. We had a few version bumps and we also moved to Bookworm. We added a few platforms to the JDK21 preview images and, of course, bumped the parent image. As I was telling you, you have to deliver a new version for Inbound Agent once you have released a version for Docker Agent. Yep. It is what it is. By the yeah. way, the updates are not synchronized with the Docker agent image. So, uh, we oh. are missing two releases uh, because the update CLI process is checking for an ARM version 7 image, which it doesn't oh. seem, but it looks like it's published at least for the dash 8 version. So that's most probably update key issue. I'm going to have a look on this one. I think it's minor. 
Uh, but yeah, we we need to, uh -oh. to check. Um, no okay, worries. I... No, no worries. It's just a minor thing. So that could most probably be a bug in update CLI though. That has been yeah. fixed since then. So that's why I was waiting today uh, with the last change. Got it. Thank you, Damien. And then for the controller, we had, of course, four new releases with um, the new LTS version and three other weekly versions. And the um, last changes we have is a bump to Debian Bookworm and a bump of UBA to 8.8.1.0.6.7. Now, done with the list à la prévère, uh, let's go to a new topic, which is hand charts and cube operators. Spoiler alert, I don't know anything about that. So I'm showing you the issue that has been raised by Daniel Beck uh, today, earlier today, and it looks like he found a bug. Um, yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. On, no, 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 this is good. Okay. I was about to say that he opened. Uh, can you go up a bit, please? Yeah, it's a good one. Okay. So Damien, would you have anything to, to add about that? So we have that question, are, or is the Kubernetes operator we have here project um, still maintained and used? And should we invite their maintainer on the platform SIG? That's a raw question. Is it part of the official Jenkins platform distribution? Is it a, is it a P1, P2, P3 project? Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, as a Kubernetes administrator, I tend to avoid operator as much as possible. So I don't know. Um, that's uh, I've never seen. A, I've never had a case of running a Jenkins controller that could be solved by the operator here, because it it makes some special assumptions that I don't like. But that's personal opinion. It doesn't mean it. You should not use. Mm -hmm. However. Yeah, its contribution are decreasing. So, uh, yeah, I propose that we try to invite their authors if they want to to speak about that, and if we have users of this one, to encourage them to raise their concern here to see what we can do about that. Okay, got it. I know none of them, but it doesn't mean anything. Okay. The the Kubernetes operator is an alternative as the official Jenkins and chart, if you have a Kubernetes cluster and you want to spin up one or more Jenkins controllers and their agents. The idea of the operator is that you use the Kubernetes representation and basically once it's installed, you, you instead of uh, Elm installing a chart for each of the controller you want, you just provide a few YAML and you have a kubectl get Jenkins uh, custom resource. It's not pod, it's not container, it's Jenkins managed by the Kubernetes API endpoint. That's the goal of an operator in general. Um, and yeah, I don't know much about this one. Uh, so that's why I proposed we discuss because if we have someone motivated taking over the project, that's part of the Jenkins platform ecosystem at, because we already manage the images on the M chart here. So mm -hmm. that makes sense to have them here or to write down and synchronize with them that it's not officially supported, it's just a project somewhere by someone else. It's just that it's inside the Jenkins A umbrella. Yep, you're right. So uh, let me put an action item, maybe for me. Uh, this, oh, I see uh, Hervé had that this message. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this plugin was almost abandoned, abandoned before, as you plugin. saw in the contribution graph. Uh, it's from uh, it's uh, it virtual lab virtus lab who, yep. who oh so it's a company okay initially mm -hmm. and they've uh, they have accepted a new contributor which is outside of this virtual labs so virtual labs uh, give uh, gave them gave this uh, maintainer uh, project so this new maintainer is motivated but there is, there are a lot of issues and a lot of yep. needs from this yep. better users. So, yeah. Okay. So in that case, yeah, 
uh, Bruno, is that okay to invite them to the platform SIG so we can get partial help from us? Not because from me, uh, of course, but yes, uh, no problem. It, um, yeah. You're driving, It's you, you don't have yeah, yeah. to know in details every piece of technology here. I mean, I, I don't know system yeah. calls by, by, by Earth, but yeah, that would be interesting to invite them and to see the problem statement with them. Yep. So I will look at the commits and find the handle of the new maintainer and invite him directly through GitHub if I can, or I, can, I try I'll to find you. him. I'll give you oh, thank you. See you maintainer. Later. Yep. Um, for a few months now. In need of help. Directly. Cool. Thanks a lot, folks. Um, anything else you would like to address before we wrap it up? I take that for no. Thanks a lot for coming to the. Um, meeting uh, the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours and see you two weeks from now in the meantime enjoy jenkins bye bye, bye.